All right. So, uh, what we are going to discuss now is about uh, uh, dealing with the residue at infinity, which will make sense uh, uh, since we have we have been studying about the point at infinity. Okay, and uh, so you know, uh, at, let me tell you at the outset something that you have to remember uh, when uh, which distinguishes between the residue. Uh, uh, residue at infinity and the residue at a finite point in the complex plane. The point is that the residue at infinity uh, for a function which is analytic at infinity can be non-zero whereas the residue uh, at a finite point in the complex plane okay there is a point in the usual complex plane uh, for an analytic function the residue is zero okay. So this is very very important okay. Of course if <coughs> the residue is zero at a at a point it does not of course mean that the function is uh, uh, is analytic okay. But the, the fact is that if you have an analytic function at a point then the residue at that point is 0. So long as that point is a point of the usual complex plane but if it is a point at infinity okay it may be analytic at infinity but yet the residue uh, may not be 0. So, uh, so we are going to talk about residues at infinity and we are going to talk about the version of the residue theorem at on the on the extended complex plane okay so so let me uh, write this down uh, residue uh, at infinity uh, and the residue theorem for the extended complex plane So this is what we are going to talk about. So, um, so you know, let me begin by uh, by recalling uh, uh, what is the what the usual idea of residue is. Okay. So, so, uh, so recall uh, 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 if uh, is it not is a point in the complex plane. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, f of z uh, is analytic uh, in a deleted neighborhood of z0 okay uh, so uh, when i say this uh, I'm, i am i am saying that z0 is actually a singular point okay uh, so it could be a removable singularity in which means that it's not really a singular point it could be an analytic point but on the other hand it could be a honest singularity it may be a pole or an essential singularity and um, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, the residue, uh, the residue of f at z naught is given by well residue of f of z at z equal to z naught is equal to well uh, one by two pi i. Uh, so <coughs> uh, uh, so you integrate. Um, you integrate the function uh, f z d z uh, around a simple closed contour. Uh, uh, you a simple closed contour which goes around the point in the positive sense. Okay, so uh, so basically, uh, uh, so z not is this point, and of course there is a deleted neighborhood of this point, sufficiently small deleted neighborhood of this point. So in particular, there is a uh, there is a disk of a sufficiently small radius open disk surrounding that point where the function is analytic and then I am just taking a, a simple closed curve gamma okay of course it is a simple closed contour. So simple means of course that uh, uh, it does not intersect itself uh, it, it has uh, positive orientations which means that it is going anti clockwise around that point. So in other words uh, the interior of the of the contour contains the point okay. So the point lies to the left uh, of the contour as you walk along the contour okay and the region to the left of the contour as you walk along the contour in the direction specified by the contour is called the interior of the contour okay. And uh, of course uh, uh, when I say contour you must remember that gamma has to be piecewise uh, smooth. So gamma is whenever you parameterize gamma uh, mind you gamma basically is, uh, is a continuous image of an, of an interval. Okay, that's what a path is, but it can always be. It can also be a, 
piecewise continuous uh, image okay um, and uh, well uh, um, well in fact <coughs> uh, we always take gamma to be a continuous path so uh, but the thing is that uh, it is also continuously differentiable at least piecewise okay that is the condition for a contour and this much is required for this integral uh, to be defined as a Riemann integral alright. So, so this is the uh, uh, so this is the uh, uh, the residue um, and well um, uh, I am wondering uh, so um, I am wondering if this if um, that is right. So, uh, I was just wondering whether the factor 1 by 2 pi a is correct it is. Um, so, for example, if I plug in uh, 1 by z minus z naught, uh, if I take the function f of z to be 1 by z minus z naught, if I integrate 1 by z minus z naught uh, over uh, over a simple closed contour, sufficiently small contour, then <coughs> I am I'm going to get 2 pi i. So, the residue is 1. And um, well, um, see of course, it is very important that uh, I choose this gamma in such a way that there are no other singular points uh, of uh, f uh, inside other than z naught and that is of course uh, uh, true because I am choosing ga gamma inside a, a deleted neighborhood of z naught where f is analytic. So, there are no other points where f is, uh, uh, is singular other than z naught okay. Now, the point is so this is the this is the definition of residue this is one definition of residue and uh, as you can see the importance of this definition is that uh, if you if you if you multiply out the 2 pi i on uh, on the right side uh, if you multiply both sides by 2 pi i what you will get is 2 pi i times the residue is the integral of the function over gamma. So, what it tells you is that it tells you how to uh, integrate a function around a singularity okay that is the important thing. So, uh, so the fact is that why uh, is this definition uh, interesting it is interesting because uh, you get to know how to in what, what the integral of a function is around a singularity. Okay. But, the, uh, but the important thing is that you should be able to compute the left side <coughs> without having to do the integral okay. and, and that is the method of residues that you would have learnt in a first course and so there is uh, so, uh, so you also can recall the you know the, the usual definition of the, the other usual definition of residue in terms of Laurent expansions. So, the point is that since f of z is uh, assumed to be analytic in a deleted neighbourhood of z naught there is a Laurent expansion for f uh, centred at z naught and then you write out this Laurent expansion it will contain uh, both positive and, and 0 and negative powers of z minus z naught and the residue is precisely the coefficient of the of 1 by z minus z naught namely the the z minus z naught to the minus 1 okay. So, that that is another uh, so let me write that down uh, uh, recall also uh, that uh, if uh, uh, f of z is equal to sigma uh, n equal to minus infinity to infinity uh, a n uh, a n times uh, a n times z minus z naught to the power of n is uh, the Laurent expansion Laurent expansion of uh, f around z naught or f centered at z naught or f about s z naught. Uh, mind you, that's, uh, uh, that exists because of Laurent's theorem. Laurent expansion exists because of Laurent's theorem and you know the, the what is the big deal about Laurent's theorem it is it is the analog of Taylor's theorem. So, so Taylor's theorem tells you that if a function is analytic at a point uh, z naught then you can expand it as a power series in z minus z naught namely you can expand it as a series which involves only 0 and positive powers of z minus z naught. Laurent expansion tells you that you can do something similarly something as good if even if z naught was a bad point uh, if z naught was a singular point and the only singular point uh, in the in that neighborhood in its neighborhood then uh, you can uh, expand uh, f in uh, both positive and negative powers of z minus z naught okay so the the the, the fact is that if you uh, if you're dealing with a singular point you must allow negative powers of z minus z naught also in the in the series expansion and of course if z naught is a removable singularity you know uh, roughly uh, I mean this is exactly what uh, Riemann's removable singularity theorem is that if you write out the Laurent expansion you will only get a Taylor expansion if z naught is actually a removable singularity okay which is equivalent to saying that f is analytic at that point. So, uh, anyway so the point is that if f is uh, has this Laurent expansion uh, then uh, then um, uh, the residue uh, of f of z at z equal to z naught is none other than a minus 1 
and so you know uh, uh, so you know the so if I write this down this is also equal to as I wrote earlier it is 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f z d z uh, ok. Uh, and and uh, uh, so, uh, so the advantage of this formula is that you know I in many cases uh, if I can write out the Laurent expansion at z0 then I can explicitly find out what this a-1 is and that a-1 will give you uh, that multiplied by 2 pi i is going to give me give you the integral of the function ar around that point ok. So that is the advantage of this and you know you have used this in a first course in complex analysis to evaluate real integrals and so on and so forth so it is a very useful thing. Uh, now uh, the point is that you know uh, and then of course what is the generalization of this the generalization of this is that uh, suppose you are going to integrate a function uh, around a simple closed contour and assume that inside that region the function has only isolated singularities ok. Uh, uh, and and uh, you know uh, 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 there are going to be only finitely many isolated singularities and then the uh, the formula reads that if you uh, the formula that you get is essentially the residue theorem which says that if you integrate the function around a bunch of isolated singularities what you are going to get is 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function at each of those singular points ok and that is the residue theorem and uh, uh, here what we what we have written down here is that the integral of the function is 2 pi i times the residue at z0 because z0 is the only singularity and the point is that this extends to 2 pi i times some of the residues at various points which are the isolated singularities of f inside the contour ok. Uh, so that is the residue theorem essentially so the point is that you know uh, 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 it is it is uh, you know in a way uh, uh, it is very easy the residue theorem is very easy if you look at it like this ok it is it is rather not a theorem it is more part of the definition except that you if you want to really prove it you will actually be applying Cauchy's theorem ok uh, by surrounding each of the singular points by a sufficiently small disk and noting that uh, outside this disk and inside your contour the function is actually analytic ok and you will have to apply uh, the version of Cauchy's theorem for multiply connected regions uh, and you have to use this definition of residue to get the residue theorem. So, so, uh, so let me write that down uh, more generally more generally uh, if uh, 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 z, uh, uh, if f of z has only uh, uh, isolated singularity, isolated singularities, uh, inside uh, a simple closed contour, contour gamma, and of course I'm assuming that on the contour there are no singularities. Okay. Uh, uh, and 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 is analytic on gamma. So this means that it is analytic on a small neighborhood, <coughs> an open set which contains the the the, the contour gamma. So so in particular, I'm 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 avoiding the situation that uh, there are singular points of the function on the contour. Okay. Mm, of course, you know if there are singular points of the function on the contour then you know uh, at those singular points the function will fail to be continuous if they are they are honest singular points and once the function fails to be continuous it is very difficult to define the Riemann integral of the function over the contour. So you know uh, you must understand that the moment you define the Riemann integral more or less you are assuming that the function uh, the, uh, it has nothing uh, wrong going on the contour it is only what happens inside that matters ok. So <coughs> uh, well um, then uh, well then the then there are there are only finitely many uh, and uh, integral over gamma f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the uh, the sum of the residues of the residues of f at these singular points so this is uh, this is essentially the residue theorem okay uh, <coughs> of course that uh, that there are only finitely many follows from the fact that if you take the if you take the contour along with the of course whenever I, whenever i say contour uh, mind you it's always an oriented contour and without uh, if nothing is mentioned always the contour is oriented and it's given the positive orientation which means that 
if you go around the point in the anti clockwise sense okay and uh, uh, that is always uh, uh, that's all always taken for granted uh, unless uh, something else is mentioned so whenever integral over contour is mentioned you must understand that the contour is already <coughs> oriented and the orientation is positive okay so um, well um, so this is essentially the residue theorem so uh, let me write that down um, so this is uh, uh, so this is the this is the this is just the residue theorem and uh, uh, well as I told you it is very important it is very useful to evaluate integrals uh, which uh, integrals of functions around a contour uh, uh, which have uh, only isolated singularities uh, inside the contour okay. So, um, so this is it now the point is that the, what we want to do is that we want to do this for the point at infinity okay and we want a residue theorem for a domain in the extended complex plane. So, how are we going to do it? So, so the idea is very very simple uh, we start off by uh, uh, using this uh, uh, by adapting uh, by literally using the same philosophy namely the residue should be uh, you know uh, you integrate the function okay um, mm, mm, around the point okay and then divide by 2 pi i okay and then that should give you the residue. So, uh, so if you want to uh, get the residue of a function at the point at infinity first of all it should be uh, analytic in a deleted neighborhood of the point at infinity okay and then I must take a contour that goes around infinity uh, in the positive sense okay and I have to integrate the function around that contour okay uh, and divide by 2 pi i and I must get the residue at infinity okay. So, this is a this is so the definition for a residue remains the same namely you just integrate the function around uh, by going uh, over a contour that goes around the point in the positive sense as far as the point is concerned and then you divide by 2 pi i okay that is the definition all right and let us see what that that brings up. Um, so, I, I incidentally I wanted to point out something here uh, uh, which I just remembered so, so let me tell you um, so, uh, so for, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a moment uh, uh, in a way you know once you uh, uh, once you believe Laurent's theorem once you believe Laurent's theorem uh, that this is exactly uh, uh, I mean this is that this formula is correct is something that you can more or less see because you know uh, uh, so you know I have this expression that I have this expression of the Laurent series okay and uh, what I need to compute is that I need to compute integral of f over gamma okay and that is the integral that is the same as integral over gamma of the series on the right side okay and, and now the point is that I can push the integral inside the sum because the fact is that the Laurent series uh, like a Taylor series you know wherever it converges it converges normally that means it converges uniformly on compact subsets and since I am going to integrate over gamma, gamma is of course mind you any simple closed contour uh, is a compact set because it is both closed and bounded. So, uh, uh, therefore the integral of the sum is same, is same as sum of the integrals so I can push the integral across the sum and when I push the integral across the sum what is going to happen is that you know uh, I you will see that uh, if I take positive powers of z minus z naught the integrals are going to vanish because the positive powers of z minus z naught are analytic functions and Cauchy's theorem is going to tell you that whenever you whenever you integrate an analytic function around a simple closed contour you are going to get 0 in fact the positive parts are all entire functions okay they are just polynomials and um, uh, the same thing is going to happen to the constant term okay and then if you take the uh, if you take the negative powers of z minus z naught uh, greater than uh, 2 okay. So, I mean uh, what I mean by that is if you take terms involving 1 by z minus z naught the whole squared 1 by z minus z naught the whole cube and so on the integrals of, of those terms will also vanish that is because they all have anti derivatives. So, you know uh, uh, it is it's, it's something very basic that I want you to understand uh, the fact that um, an integral vanishes uh, uh, is uh, you know basically uh, it is equivalent to saying that the integral is independent of the path and uh, uh, especially when the integral uh, when the integrand has an anti derivative then you know that uh, the integral is actually the final value minus the initial value okay uh, of the antiderivative and if the final value is equal to the initial uh, value which is what will happen if you go around a closed path you are going to get the integral to be 0 okay and uh, so 
uh, you know all the all the integrals which involves involve z minus z naught to the power of n where n is minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and so on they are all going to vanish so the only thing that is going to uh, survive is going to be integral uh, over gamma a minus 1 uh, e z minus z naught power minus 1 dz okay and you know the integral over gamma z minus z naught to the minus 1 dz is just uh, uh, going to be 2 pi i and that is that is just because of uh, Cauchy's theorem because the integral over gamma is not going to really depend on the shape of gamma you can uh, replace gamma by a small circle uh, okay going around z naught and then you actually parameterize the circle as usual write it as uh, z equal to rho e to the i theta uh, theta varying from 0 to 2 pi and compute the integral you get 2 pi i okay. So uh, therefore what I want to tell you is that once you know Laurent's theorem okay once you believe Laurent's theorem this formula for the residue that uh, a minus 1 gives you the residue is, is more or less uh, direct okay. Uh, so that is uh, uh, something that I want you to recall. Now let me go back um, and define the residue at infinity. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, f of z uh, is defined uh, in uh, neighbourhood of infinity okay. So mind you that what this means is that f of z is defined on a circle on the exterior of a circle of sufficiently large radius that is what it means. A neighbourhood of infinity is by definition you know by the stereographic projection the same as the exterior of a sufficiently large circle okay and uh, and and uh, uh, so uh, so at this point uh, uh, we what we do is that we define the residue of f at infinity to be just the integral over gamma uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f z dz where gamma is a simple closed contour that goes around infinity in the positive sense okay this is exactly the way we define it as we defined it for a point in the usual complex plane okay so let me write that down. Uh, then uh, 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 residue of f of z at z equal to infinity is defined to be so I put a colon and equal to uh, uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma. Uh, so you know let me uh, um, let me use uh, let me let me change notation to f w because I will need to uh, appeal to uh, something else namely I, I need I need to appeal to changing the variable to uh, 1 by z uh, so let me do that oops uh, so f w w equal to infinity uh, 1 by f w d w okay 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma so where so let me write that this is very very important where gamma is a simple closed contour uh, contour going around the point at infinity in the positive sense. So you know uh, this is the this is the uh, this is the definition and well you know uh, uh, so the, mm, this is exactly the definition that you would have made for a point in the complex plane and this is the same definition I am using for a point uh, for the point at infinity but then there are two or three things that one has to be careful about. The first thing is that what do you mean by a, uh, a contour that is going around infinity in the positive sense. So the, the fact is that uh, uh, you know you must think of a contour uh, 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 in so here is where you again appeal to the stereographic projection okay. Uh, you know that uh, uh, a sufficiently small neighbourhood of infinity is given by uh, the, in the exterior of a sufficiently large circle centred at the origin okay. So in some sense a sufficiently large circle centred at the origin should be a, a contour which uh, goes around the point at infinity okay and you can you can see this uh, you can see this uh, so so more generally if you take a sufficiently large uh, contour uh, which goes around the origin okay uh, a simple closed contour which goes around the origin uh, sufficiently large means that it encloses a sufficiently large area okay uh, then uh, um, uh, for that for that matter I mean it lies in the exterior of uh, I should rather say it lies in the exterior of a circle of sufficiently large radius okay then that itself is an example of a simple closed contour that goes around the point at infinity and that is because of the uh, that is because of the stereographic projection and the only thing is that what is this what is this business of the positive orientation of that contour with respect to infinity mind you the positive orientation means that infinity should lie in the interior of that contour 
okay. So, you should orient the contour in such a way such that the, uh, uh, the, the interior of the contour cont contains a point at infinity. Now, you know if I take a uh, if I take a circle sufficiently large circle centered at the origin and you orient it the usual way I did uh, which we do namely give it the anti clockwise orientation then the origin becomes uh, comes into the interior the interior just is the interior of that circle okay and the exterior uh, will be the exterior of the circle and that will contain uh, the point at infinity. So, you can see from this argument that you will have to orient it clockwise okay. So, the, the so gamma must be a simple closed contour uh, lying in a sufficiently small neighbourhood of infinity. So, it should be lying uh, uh, in the exterior of a circle of sufficiently large radius and it should be given the clockwise orientation that is what it means okay. So, let me write that down. Uh, uh, this means that uh, gamma should be a simple closed contour in the complex plane lying outside a circle of sufficiently a large radius uh, but uh, given the uh, clockwise or uh, negative orientation. So, uh, so here you see you have to be careful I am saying that gamma uh, should have negative orientation here but in the statement before that I am saying it should have positive sense. So, mind you in the statement preceding it was positive sense with respect to the point at infinity and positive sense with respect to the point at infinity is uh, negative sense with respect to the origin. Okay. So, so these are not contradictory statements okay. you have to understand uh, the subtlety and uh, well of course, uh, you can also uh, see this pictorially more or less see you know if you if you draw the uh, stereographic projection. So, here is the x y plane uh, which is a complex plane uh, or the z plane and then I write then you know we draw this third axis which we call it as u and then you take the unit sphere. Uh, surface of the unit sphere in 3 space I am um, going to get uh, something like this uh, you know this is this is the this is the stereographic projection. Uh, uh, so, you know if I if I take uh, now you know if I take a sufficiently uh, 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 if I if I take a circle uh, in the on the complex plane uh, uh, of sufficiently uh, large radius okay uh, and uh, uh, then you know uh, well you know the point at infinity corresponds to to this point here uh, on the on the uh, stereographic uh, on the Riemann sphere which corresponds to the north pole. So, this is the this corresponds to the point at infinity okay. So, I put this uh, triple uh, line uh, to tell you that it corresponds to the point at infinity under the stereographic projection. And uh, well um, you know uh, what happens to the uh, uh, well you know the, the, the exterior of this circle uh, uh, the exterior of the circle in the complex plane uh, that is going to correspond to well uh, on the Riemann sphere is going to correspond to this small uh, uh, disc like uh, uh, region though it is a curved surface uh, uh, it is a small disc like region. Uh, when I say disc like I am I mean topologically uh, you can flatten it to look like a disc topologically and it is a disc like uh, neighbourhood of the north pole on the on the Riemann sphere okay. And uh, uh, that is how the shaded regions on the plane namely the uh, uh, the exterior of the circle and uh, uh, the uh, the small cap on surrounding the uh, it is like a polar cap okay uh, if you imagine the earth. Uh, it is the north at the, at the north pole. So, uh, now the now the point is that you see uh, what you must understand is that if I now give these uh, if I now give this uh, 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 so, so, so in particular you know if I now take a, a sufficiently 
uh, if I take a contour which which uh, which lies uh, in outside the circle, okay. Uh, if I take a contour like this, now that contour is going to correspond to a contour here uh, on the uh, uh, Riemann sphere that goes around the point at infinity, okay. And as I make this circle bigger and bigger. Uh, that is going to give you a smaller and smaller contour, simple close contour that goes around the point at infinity. The only thing that you have to worry about is the orientation, the orientation, uh, the way I have drawn it, the orientation should be like this, mind you it is the, it is actually, uh, it is actually clockwise about the origin and the reason for that is that if you define it like that, uh, which is what you should do if you are dealing with the point at infinity, then the interior of uh, that contour is the exterior. So, so, so this region. Uh, this uh, thing outside, this is the interior of that contour, okay, and well, uh, and uh, it is actually the region that lies to the left of the contour as you walk along the contour, okay, and you can see that this region uh, corresponds to well this region on the uh, on the Riemann sphere, and that of course contains the point at infinity. So the point at infinity is an interior point for the contour oriented in the clockwise direction, okay. So, uh, you can see this uh, uh, diagrammatically, okay, fine. So, very well, now that uh, we have defined uh, what the uh, uh, residue at infinity is, uh, so of course this is gamma, right. Uh, so, let us, let us compute it, let us compute what the residue at infinity is. So, uh, so f of z is, well, uh, well f of w, well uh, let me write f of w f of w is going to be sigma uh, n equal to minus infinity to infinity a n w to the n. This is the Laurent series of f, um, uh, this is the Laurent series of f at in a uh, in a neighborhood of infinity, okay. And mind you, uh, in principle it is actually also the Laurent series of f at the or, uh, at the origin in some sense, centered at the origin, uh, but in a domain that is uh, uh, a neighborhood of infinity. And the only thing that uh, you uh, distinguish is that when you say this is a Laurent series uh, at infinity, you see the singular part is the one that involves the positive powers of W and the analytic part is the one that involves 0 and negative powers of W because it is the negative powers of W that behave well at infinity, okay. So that is the only difference but what you are actually looking at is actually the Laurent series of F at, at the origin, okay. Uh, now, but anyway, the, the fact is for the same reasons that I told you earlier, if you compute the, if now if you, if you com compute uh, uh, integral over gamma f w d w, if I do this, what I am going to get is, uh, and, and you know of course I think uh, as a 1 by 2 pi i, uh, this is what it is, uh, well um, uh, you know mind you if I do, if I compute this integral the way I normally would compute the integral on the plane, what I will first do is I always compute integrals with uh, with my contour uh, being positively oriented with respect to the usual plane uh, that is with respect to the origin. So, what I will do is I will first write this as minus 1 by 2 pi i uh, integral over minus gamma where minus gamma is the uh, gamma oriented in the, in the in the anticlockwise sense and that is the positive sense for uh, the plane, okay. Uh, with respect to the origin if you want, okay. And uh, then I will get this and you know now uh, uh, if I plug in the series here, uh, okay and, and, and remember that uh, I can do integration term by term because of the same reasons I told you earlier because the, the Laurent series always converges no, uh, normally, it converges uniformly on compact sets and gamma uh, or minus gamma for that matter they are uh, as sets they are compact sets. So, if I do that again what is going to happen is that what is going to survive is only the uh, coefficient of 1 by w, okay and that is going to give me uh, that is the coefficient when n is minus 1, so I am going to get a, a minus 1. The only thing is that I am going to get, uh, 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 I am going to get a minus a minus 1, okay. So, what you what you must see is that uh, I mean what you must see what you will see is that I will get 1 by 2 pi i times uh, 2 pi i times uh, 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 a minus 1 this is as before and I get minus a minus 1 okay. So, uh, uh, so you see uh, so the so the moral is the, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, when you are looking at 
the residue at infinity okay uh, what you do is uh, you literally uh, get minus of a minus 1 okay which is uh, with with an extra minus sign added to it okay whereas if you you look at the usual Laurent series uh, of a point uh, around a point in the complex plane then the residue is actually a minus 1 which is just the quotient of the first negative power of the of the variable okay whereas in this case it is the minus of that and uh, 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 so uh, you know you, you can now believe that uh, you can you can see from right from here you can see something happening suppose this uh, suppose this function f had only uh, singularities at the origin and at infinity okay uh, which means that this Laurent series has uh, infinite radius of convergence okay so, uh, so in, in by that I mean the Laurent series is valid for all w not 0 and not infinity okay so it is uh, it is valid on c star c minus the origin okay if that is the case then you see this function if you calculate the residue at the origin you are going to get plus a minus 1 okay which is the usual definition of residue if I if I take this function suppose it is also analytic in the in a neighborhood of the origin okay and suppose the only uh, singularities are at the origin and at infinity okay then you see you notice that the residue of the function at the origin is plus a minus 1 and the residue of the function at infinity is minus a minus 1 what is the sum of residues it is 0 and, and that is exactly what the residue theorem is uh, says for the for uh, uh, any function which has only isolated singularities in the in the extended plane okay. So uh, uh, you know uh, so uh, the statement is that you take a function which has only isolated singularities in the extended plane okay uh, which means that you know there are only mind you it means whenever you say isolated singularities uh, 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 in the extended plane there are to be only finitely many that is because the extended plane is compact and any subset of a compact isolated set subset of a compact set is finite in this case okay. So uh, uh, therefore uh, you know uh, what the residue theorem will say is that if you take the residues at all the points uh, at the points in the finite complex plane and you take this residue at infinity and you add them up you will get 0 and here uh, that is exactly what happens if, if f were having a residue uh, uh, if f was having a singularity at the origin only and a singularity at infinity okay then you see that from this computation the residue at 0 is plus a minus 1 the residue at infinity is minus a minus 1 the sum is 0 okay. So uh, anyway so uh, the moral of the story is that you know it gives you a very easy way of computing residue at infinity it is very very simple what you do is that you simply write the Laurent expansion of the function uh, about the origin but write it so that it is valid in uh, the exterior of a sufficiently large circle okay uh, mind you, you you must always remember this that uh, so this is probably uh, maybe I should spend a uh, few uh, uh, few minutes on this see in a first course in complex analysis when you study about Laurent expansion at a point you must remember that there are several Laurent expansions there could be several Laurent expansions at a point that is because uh, the Laurent expansions the domains of the Laurent expansions are actually annuli which are whose boundaries contain the singular points okay. So if I say if I talk about the Laurent expansion of a function at a singular po at a point okay uh, it could be even a uh, analytic point does not matter but the problem is that uh, because there are singularities there are other singularities the, the Laurent uh, expansions will be different expansions because you will get different annuli okay and therefore uh, when you write the Laurent expansion at the origin you should not look at the Laurent expansion at the origin that may be valid in a deleted neighborhood of the origin which, uh, which is at, at, at whose boundary there is a finite singularity you should not look at that you should rather look at a Laurent expansion that is valid outside uh, so a circle of sufficiently large radius okay write that Laurent expansion that is the Laurent expansion that you need to work with infinity okay and in that Laurent expansion look at the uh, again look at the coefficient of 1 by uh, the variable and take it to the minus sign that is the residue at infinity okay and uh, that is how you can very easily write out uh, you, you can you can compute what the residue at infinity is and that combined with the residue theorem is another powerful tool for computing lot of integrals okay as we will see in the next lecture.